Okay, so just talked about the overview of the actual mount itself and what's going to happen. So as far as assembly goes, basically for right now, we're going to set this totally out of the way. We don't need this until we go to do the installation. Uh, tools that you're going to need. Let me move the transducer out of the way too. Uh, what you're going to need, you want to get some scotch brake. This is just to actually buff up the shiny part of the transducer where it's going to get glued onto. That just gives the uh, adhesive a bit more bite. So uh, you're going to want some scotch brake. I like using uh, JB Weld's Marine Weld. Um, it's a two-part epoxy, basically. You get the hardener and the resin. And uh, once it actually works on steel, plastic, the whole nine yards, uh, meant for water submersion, it's great. Not very expensive. You can just get it off Amazon. Um, so it's JB Weld uh, Marine Weld. Uh, you need something to mix your epoxy on, a little stir stick, uh, Allen key and 3 8 wrench. That's going to be for when you go to install the mount together afterwards. And then what you're going to need um, is we'll get this back over here. The transducer itself physically needs cut. And I'm going to show you right here, basically, pull these nuts off they're going to be on when they come you pull the nuts and bolts off Take a second get them out of the way like i say the nice thing about this mount is uh it's just so versatile that you can move you can move your transducer back and forth if you get one of my three-in-one trans mounts you can move it to the back of the boat and do whatever you want it's going to work pretty cool so um You're going to be able to do that so basically what actually happens here is this is the bottom the narrow part is actually going to slide inside the actual transducer so what we have to do is actually take a uh, sharpie marker and you're just going to uh might be hard to see here but you're just going to eyeball straight across and uh Basically, what you're going to land up doing is where you just drew the line, right across here, parallel to the surface, doesn't have to be too exact, because uh, once it's all in and done, it's all guarded and protected anyway, and it physically doesn't do anything. You could cut it right down this point if you wanted to. Uh, once it's all glued in, it doesn't make any difference. Um, and then we're going to cut it with um, either a hacksaw, if you've got a hacksaw, or a fine-toothed uh, wood saw will also work. Um, so you need, uh, your saw marker just to mark it, your JB Weld, and then, uh, once we get the, uh, JB Weld all mixed up and the bracket actually glued onto here to hold it in place, um, till it sets up, which this stuff takes, I think it was about, uh, eight hours or so, four to six hours, it says cure overnight. So, um, basically you're going to take some electrical tape and you're just going to tape the mount to it just to hold it in place while it's drying. Um, again... In my other videos, any other videos you've seen, talked about this Scotch, uh, the Scotch uh, Super 88 uh, electrical tape. For electrical tape, this stuff is awesome. Highly recommend it. It uh, lasts for ever. It doesn't get in the cold. It doesn't get uh, real hard and brittle in the heat. It's great. I absolutely love this stuff. I always recommend it. So that's uh, electrical tape, Super 88 by Scotch. Works well. Okay, so. Let me just move some of the stuff out of the way again. So we're going to undo the transducer cable just to keep it out of the way a little bit. We're going to just pull it out a little bit, a couple notches, just so we can get this out of the way. Now, I don't have a vise right here. This would be really good to do in a vise, and maybe I will move the whole camera over to the actual vise. So, just one second. All right, I was just going to uh, brought the vise over here. I just turned my uh, workbench here around. I'm in my wood shop again tonight. So, just uh, still cold over my steel shop. I only have the wood stove going over there. And uh, it's uh, April 25th today, and still pretty cold up here in Ontario. It was nice out during the day today, but uh, right now it's getting down to freezing again. So, um, just nice to uh, come over here. I got it always nice and warm in my wood shop. So 
furnace is always going and uh, nice and comfortable. So um, I just decided that uh, in order to see that line, I could see it clear as day, but on the camera, you're not going to be able to. So I just put some uh, painter's tape on there and uh, I'll show you that again. So basically this will uh, show up a lot better. So all you're going to do is right along that point there is where we're actually going to cut. So... Now I will turn the camera and uh, we'll actually cut this. I'll show you how it's done. All right, guys, got the workbench turned around here. So um, basically, you can do either one. Probably the best one to go with would be if you got a hacksaw. I just got a little guy here, but uh, it's going to work good. Keep the actual transducer cable um, pulled back out of the way. You're going to miss it by about three eighths of an inch, half an inch, so you're not going to have to worry about anything there. Just put your finger right on the line and start cutting. And uh, it's going to go, it's just plastic, so it's going to go uh, really nice and easy here. Just going to take that clean off. Do it with this one here, just on the. Uh... It actually cuts just like butter. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty easy to cut there. So then, basically, let's peel the tape off. And. Uh... That's about all it is. So just like that. So I'll move it all back over and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, so we're all back. We got it all sanded up here. Cut, I mean. And then what it ended up doing is uh, it was just out by a little bit, a little bit uneven from the cutting. So I have a belt sander. I just touched with a belt sander. If you got it nice and straight with the saw, you don't have to worry about that. But uh, definitely cut it with a manual hacksaw or handsaw um, and uh, don't try to do anything mechanical because uh, number one you don't want to cut your fingers or anything like that or hurt the actual transducer but uh, put in the vise just like I'd seen how you saw there in the video and then go from there <coughs> sorry about that so next thing you'll see here how the two pieces actually slide together it actually looks like it's sloping downwards, but the actual transducer, the flat of the transducer in the center is uneven with the actual plastic itself. So it tapers up. So that's what makes it look like that. Um, the one thing we have to do is just because of where the screw hole locations are is right at the back, the, uh, the hole for the three in one mount is still uh, in that area. So all we're going to do is uh, make a little notch in here. I'm going to show you how easy that is just with a pair of side cutters. So I don't know if you can hopefully see that. I made a little spot in the bracket where it needs to be. And then you just get a pair of uh, side cutters, or I love these ones. Um, and all you're going to do is just put it along the line where you want it, and just don't cut it right through right away. Just kind of pinch it. Make a little indent. Um, do both ways. Once you get the indent, then you can uh, do it. It just pops right off. You're not going to break the plastic or anything like that. If you want to use a Dremel or whatever, you could, but uh, that nice and easy to do. So now what's actually going to happen when you put this in, there's lots of room for the actual bolt to uh, fasten in there. That's going to work really well. So that's that part. So now we're all done with... Uh, a little bit of uh, modifications to it. That was nice and easy. Nothing real hard. Simple hand tools to do all that stuff. Now we're going to get ready to uh, glue it on. So you're going to take your scotch Bright and uh, you're going to want to just fold it up. And all we're going to want to do is take the shine off of here. So you don't have to do a whole lot. Just rub it down. And uh, that's not going to hurt the transducer or anything like that. All we're doing is uh, taking that uh, shiny finish off there that uh, just going to give a little bit more bite for that epoxy to uh, grab onto. It's going to adhere to the, uh, the mount and uh, it's going to work really well. 
Okay, back into the back a little bit. Blow it out and that's good. So now you can see the, uh, the shine. After you blow it off, you'll see some of the dust go away and you might see some spots where you missed. There we go. So there you go, the shine is all gone. It doesn't feel rough or anything like that. It's just uh, that shine is gone, so it's gonna be good there. Take your epoxy, equal parts of both. And uh, you can put the resin down first. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna mix up the rest of it. This was some tubes left over from the last time uh, when I did the uh, triple shot transom mount, um, I did about half the tube then, so I'm just going to use up the uh, the rest. So basically, I aim for half. If you're starting out fresh with a fresh tube, squeeze about half of it out. And you got the hardener. All right, guys, sorry about that. I uh, had squeezed out all the uh, the black, the actual um, black adhesive there for the JPO weld, the resin, and uh, I just wasn't 100% sure if it was one-to-one uh, -one as far as mixing-wise goes, which it is. So I'm just going to make a uh, blob that is the same size as the other one. I just wanted to make sure some of them are uh, not 50-50, like 25-50. So i uh, do that never hurts to uh, nothing worse with epoxy than mixing it up and realizing that the stuff is never ever going to set so it wouldn't have been good so there we go equal size amounts let's get a little wood stir stick here mix her up it's going to turn into a nice gray when it's mixed which uh, after I did the other one the, uh, the transom mount, if you watch that video at all, how I did that installation, it turns out to be almost perfect as far as color-wise goes. I was thinking it was going to be lighter and would the epoxy would kind of show up like crazy, but blends right into the rest of it, so it worked really well. I like this stuff. It uh, sets nicely. A little bit longer but, uh, to set, but you uh, nice thing about that is you got some uh, play time there to uh, fine-tune and adjust and all that stuff, so... Basically, so we've got your mount now. I'm just going to uh, put it on. And uh, just put it right down in the middle. You know, uh, it's going to... Uh, Sit in there nicely. I get another stick here. It's always nice to have another little stick to uh, be able to get it all down at the end so you can uh, use all that you've mixed. There we go. Okay. So. That's all the way down across. Everything's good there. Move this out of the way. So then another thing you're going to see in, on the actual mount, the bottom side, I've got some holes cut into here. Those four holes do nothing but have the actual adhesive squeeze into there and probably going to mushroom over the top, the inside, and that's going to guarantee that it never goes anywhere. Not that it is, but it's just going to uh, help guarantee that uh, it'll uh, always stay in place there. So... Um, basically nicely slide it back and what you're going to want to do here is there I've already touched it but you're going to want to have it outwards and then push it in so the adhesive goes back inwards um, 
make it square. And uh, basically, right there, it's pushed down. Already getting some squeeze out there. Uh, before we tape this into place, we're going to uh, just take your fingers and uh, get some of that off. But that's good right there. Put this down. Try not to get it on your fingers because it's hard to get off. Start your electrical tape. And we're only going to put a couple pieces actually around to uh, hold it into place. So you're going to look down it. And I don't know if we're going to be able to see on the camera, but you're going to look down and see that uh, it just looks like it's dead straight down. Um, so it's pushed all the way back and in line. You're going to take your electrical tape and uh, just put it in in two places just to uh, hold it overnight. And in the back, it's kind of wedged in there. You can't go in the back, it interlocks into there. So it really, uh, it can't go anywhere left to right. So you're just going to uh, put it in. And, uh, strap it down. This electrical tape so tight. It's uh, best just to cut it. There we go. Okay, so that's the uh, first part of the installation here. So I'm going to let this sit overnight. A little bit more coming out through the sides. Looks nice. Boxy's real good. Get any off the transducer now while it's... Uh, I didn't get any on there, but uh, looks good. So that's basically it for uh, tonight's part of the video there. So um, tomorrow morning, I'll come back out. It'll be well cured and set by that time. And uh, I'll show you actually how to uh, install it onto the trolling motor bracket itself, three-in-one mount. And then... Uh, I'm actually uh, got a guy coming that is uh, getting this mount off me, so I'm actually going to uh, just show it on. I might videotape it or for sure do some pictures, but uh, tomorrow morning I'll come back out here, show you how to physically bolt it onto the uh, three-in-one guard mount, and uh, away we go from there. Just uh, to confirm, though, while I have it here, basically it's just going to sit just like that and be perfect. So it's going to work really, really well for everyone. It's the exact same length as a three-in-one mount, and uh, it's going to be good. So I will see you guys back out here in the morning, and uh, I'll just leave that go, let it dry overnight, and we'll see you then.